Hello there. What is going on, everybody? Today, I am bringing you a short playthrough of Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. I will be using Bior for a solo play to give you a touch of what's going to go on in this game. I'm going to plop him down right here. We're going to start the game out, but before I do, I want to talk about a couple of things. First off, spoiler warning, we're going to be going into the story a little bit. I will be reading uh, from the Act 1 journal, so you are going to get completely embraced into the story. So if you don't want any spoilers at all, I would advise you to turn back. Uh, however, if you're all right with a little bit of spoilers, I mean, I don't think we'll get too far into it, but we may experience a few of the secrets that Avalon has for us. Uh, then, by all means, continue to join me. I also invite you to subscribe. I am also giving away a Super Star Destroyer right now. That should be announced on our about December 21st. And if you are interested in winning a Super Star Destroyer for Star Wars Armada in the form of a cool stuff gift card, which you could use for virtually whatever you would like, uh, all you have to do is become a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. So we're going to dive in and take a look at Bior's starting setup. All right, so I've set up Bior's starting board. He's got two aggression, one courage, one practicality, and only one on this other side for caution. So he's going to have a hard time with diplomacy, but he'll be a little bit better suited for combat at the beginning of the game. He will start off with three food and one wealth, but no reputation, magic, or experience. I have set his energy to the full slot right here, set his terror to zero, and his health all the way to full. Uh, he can spend five energy, which is most of his energy for the day, uh, to craft a random craftable item. Additionally, he has a wound that he is trying to conceal here deep beneath his armor that is festering, and if he doesn't take care of it, it will harm him. So. Uh, he will receive minus one health if he rests while either hungry or exhausted. Hungry, in other words, if you don't have food. Exhausted if you're down here in the red. So I'll have to make sure I am not going down into the red for energy unless I absolutely have to. To start our adventure, you find a note has been left for you by your master. Beor, you've been a good lad and a great help. I would have closed the forge long ago if not for the strength of your arms. I feel I owe you something. When I told you to stay in Quanacht and keep an eye on my property, I was lying. The forge is already lost, just like all of our land. The sagas of old are true. Our island did once belong to twisted immortal powers. It was not a place for men. But Arthur, the first of kings who landed on these shores with our people, has managed to subdue this realm, inch by inch. He took the grail from the four dwellers, and used it to bring seasons and cycles known from our world to this godless place. We all thought that the men here in our village were raised to immortalize this. The truth is, it was also created to keep these ancient powers out, to anchor this island to the world of men. Now the men here are going dark. Something has broken. The spring will not come. The animals won't breed. Lord Devain secretly gathered five strongest and wisest men and women of Quanacht, including me. He is leading us east to find help in Camelot before it's too late. And before the land starts sinking into the weirdness. If we don't return or send another message, it means we have failed and everything is up to you. Yvain didn't want you due to your lack of experience and short temper, but I have always believed in you, lad. Save our people. Or if you will not, Simply try to save yourself, Forge Master Erfir. So now I am ready to begin. I have my men here on the Quanacht farmhold set to seven, and I will place Bior right here in his home village. I will start off by doing the location action right here on the card. Every 
card has some type of location action that you can do while you're there. You don't have to pay an energy to do that, so I'm going to just do this one. Now, this one does require you to pay an energy, but it's not in addition to doing the action. Um, so this one says pay one energy to gain one reputation, and that is once per day. So I will go ahead and do that, and I'll move my thing down to five and gain one reputation. So now I am one less energy for my day so far. For my second thing, I will think I will explore, uh, and I would either flip this card over, or since I have the min here on there, I can go straight to the book. So we open the journal to page 101, which is the same as the location number on the card, and we find the text for Quanacht Farmhold. A deep feeling of loss fills everything in Quanacht, from dilapidated farms to the sunken eyes of those who remain in town. The men here in the market is all but extinguished, and everyone brave or resourceful enough left to find a solution. And now we have our options. If you have certain statuses, you're going to have vo uh, certain verses that you need to go to immediately. However, I don't have any of these statuses, uh, so I can jump straight down to otherwise. Choose from below. I can visit the families of champions from the first expedition. I could go to verse 1 could ask the townsfolk to help me prepare. I could go to verse 3, or I could just leave and exploration ends. Um, I, you know, I'm not really feeling like I want to visit right now. I think I'm going to ask the townsfolk to help me prepare. I want, I want, I want my best chance of survival. So I'm going to turn to verse 3. Um, and, and the thing is, you try not to read the other verses. This is part of, you know, the discipline, I think, to kind of preserve some of the story as you are reading this uh, You'll want to try to avoid as much unnecessary text as you can. So here at verse 3, as I choose to uh, ask the townsfolk for help. Though they have little left, they share with you their last remaining supplies. Somehow, this seems unworthy of a hero. But since all the true heroes were lost, who will dare to question your methods? If you have at least one reputation and no scrounger status... Receive one random item, one food, and the scrounger status exploration ends. So you're probably thinking, what is the scrounger status? Well, we're going to reference our, our sheet here. And our Act 1 sheet has all of these different potential uh, things that we, these statuses that we can check off. So what I would want to do is I would want to go ahead and get a, uh, a pencil and mark in the scrounger status right here. So now I'm officially a scrounger. What are that is going to do is f immediately, that's going to mean I can't just keep coming back and asking them for help because they're like, hey, we already gave you some food and an item, right? So that's going to do it. And now exploration ends. So I'm going to go ahead and assign another food to my board here and I'll draw one random item. And I've got a clan sword. This is a weapon and so this will be useful in combat. I can add two to the value of my sequence when fighting enemies with aggression or courage vulnerabilities. That's the lion and the turtle or the warthog or whatever symbol that is. The, that's what that does. So that's going to be helpful for when we go into combat. Additionally, I forgot to show you we are going to have an event that happens at the beginning of each day. So I have this new task to earn the Menhir Rights card before the men here goes out. I can learn these rights and locations surrounding Quanacht. So, and it gives you hints as well. Um, so I can spend a night in the Quanacht farmhold to read its dream. That might be helpful. So while that's going on, I've already done a couple of actions and I could explore a little bit more. I've still got a couple of energy. So why don't I go ahead and walk over to the charred conclave. That'll spend an, another energy from me. I am down to three, and I've moved that down, and I have the lightning bolt symbol here. Now that says, draw a gray encounter when you enter this location, once per day. Gray encounters are likely to be some form of combat, so let's see what happens. All right, so I'm going to draw a gray encounter, and we have the Vagabond here. He's a power five feature. He's got vulnerabilities in aggression, courage, and practicality, which is good because that means my clan sword here 
is going to give me a little extra damage on my sequence. Uh, and basically, when I, if I drop to one health, I lose all of my money, my coin, and the encounter ends. So if he gets me low, he's going to rob me, which is unfortunate. Um, uh, if I have one card out, he'll deal damage. If I have two cards out, he'll deal two damage. If I have three or more cards out and he gets to attack, he'll run away. Uh, but if I kill him, I'll get an experience and I can loot uh, a coin and a craftable item. All right, so we've got that. Um, I'm going to pull out my damage, my combat deck now. And I will draw, since I'm solo, I'll draw three cards. Now, I could uh, not play anything and I could pass, uh, letting him attack. On my next turn, I will draw, you know, I'd be able to draw plus one card. I'd be able to draw up to four. But each round, you can only keep maximum of one of the cards you already have. So look at the cards that I have. I've got reposition, faint, and attack. This one is uncounterable. Uh, this guy isn't countering anything, so I don't really care that it's uncounterable. Um, reposition this turn, end my turn after playing this card. This is going to be useful for those times where I really need aggression, but they're only vulnerable to practicality or something like that because it's basically got everything on every side except for magic on this side. But this one's just used to change up my sequence. Um, I do have attack here. Um, attack has got a value of 1. It's the only one that actually does any damage. It does say playing this card ends your turn. Um, so uh, I will go ahead and attack, and it lines up right here uh, with aggression. Uh, I have a value of 1, but two plus 2 for the clan sword because he does meet the requirements. So I have a total value of 3. His value is 5. So I, that's all I can do. Um, it'll end my turn. I can keep one card. I'm not going to keep any of these, though. Um, and I will discard them, and I'll be able to draw three more cards for next turn. But now it's his turn, and he is going to hit me for one. So that's going to actually lower my health by one. We start the next round. So now I have the Bloodthirsty Rage. Uh, I could, in theory, play that right here because I've got two aggression there, or I could link it from courage to courage. Either way, um, I could do that, but that's going to also cost me one energy. This one uh, wants me to play one energy, and, and, and I don't know if I want to spend the energy right now, because I can just play Final Blow, um, and uh, this will give me two more, plus the two from my sword, and I can link it right here, caution to caution. Um, and yeah, that, that looks like that will work, and 1 plus 2 plus 2 for my sword is 5, so that's going to be enough to beat the Vagabond. He doesn't attack again, and I'm going to gain an experience. Boom. Uh, and I'm going to loot a coin, so one more wealth. Whoops, 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 there we go. And I gain a craftable item, and then he goes away. So to gain a craftable item, I'll just start drawing cards from the item deck until I get one that has a C on it. So the Riding Donkey does not have a C, so that doesn't count as a craftable item. We'll just keep going. Uh, Berserker Drought does not have a C. We'll just keep going. Ah, the Battle Horn. That has a C, so this is what we get. We get the Battle Horn. Draw one extra card at the start of your turn if your sequence ends with a Caution symbol, caution opening. So as long as I have the caution, like the little warthog on the side, uh, then I'll get an extra card each turn. So this will give me more options for combat. Very cool. Nice to know. And then I'll shuffle these back in. And now we'll finish our turn. So since I moved over here, I've already done my lightning bolt, I also have to reveal uh, the new locations that the arrows are pointing to because they are within the eight range square around an active men here. So I've got 109 right here, and that's pointing down, so we're going to go and reveal that. And this is the Island Asylum. And then we also have uh, 107, which is, we we're going to find those in the deck. And this is the, uh, the, the Whitening, where you can trade with townsfolk. Oh, that's a good place to go get some money. Look at that. I can go and try to get some money. All right, well, maybe I'll do that a little bit later. Uh, all right, so we have an option here of maybe we want to explore the Charred Conclave a little bit. Uh, I only have a little bit of energy left, so let's go ahead and 
we're a charred conclave is 104 so we're gonna go ahead and we'll explore the charred conclave so what i'll do is i'll flip this card over and oh we get a nice little look at the text here it doesn't take long to find it you just have to follow your nose the remnants of an enormous wicker man kneel at the bottom of a small veil you were here when it was set alight years ago the day was wet the worker man smoldered but didn't burn its victims dozens of tightly packed druids are still inside their melted faces and charred beards pressed against the bars and looking towards the gray silent skies barely audible ceaseless whispers seem to fill the air if you are playing as maggot you can go to verse 10 otherwise Flip to that page in the journal. So here I am at page 104. Again, it's the same stuff, so if you really don't want to flip the cards, you don't have to. You can just open the journal. I think as the game goes on and you have more stuff on the cards, you're not going to want to be flipping them all the time. But you do get some cool artwork that kind of details the scene. Uh, so if you're playing as Magic, verse 10, I can either stay and listen, or I can dig through the remains, or I can leave while my insanity remains intact. I think I'm going to dig through the remains, so I'm going to jump to verse 2 here. You hum a joyful song to drown out the whispers and get to work. Prying apart half-melted bodies is grim and foul work. But you do find some valuables that were locked away with unfortunate druids. If you don't have the robbed wicker man status, gain a random item in the robbed wicker man status. Then gain a terror if you have more than one empathy. Exploration ends. I'm actually fortunate that I don't have any empathy right now. This means my BR just doesn't care. So I get another random item. That's awesome. So we're going to pull the adventurer's kit and, oh, I ignore the effects of heavy rainfall and unnatural chill events. So now that that is done, I've only got, uh, you know, two energy left. And if I spend any more, I'm going to be exhausted. But I do want to spend a night in Quanoct Farmhold, so this way I can get the dream that's there. I do have the eyeball here, so I could, in theory, get a dream in the Charred Conclave as well. But I think I'll go down back to Quanoct Farmhold. I am down to only one energy, as you can see right here, which is red. So I am now technically exhausted, which is going to mean when I rest, I am going to lose. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and rest. So instead of healing one, I will lose one. And that doesn't work. There we go. We got that out. Um, and instead of going up to full health, I'm not going to gain as much. But we will consume a food. And I will only go up to four instead of full. So I have less going on. And I'll definitely want to make sure that today... I don't uh, overexhaust myself. This way I'll be able to heal a little bit because if my health gets any lower, I'm just gonna start making it far more difficult for me to, uh, to do things like have full energy, for example. All right, so we're going to have a dream and we'll go ahead and pull out the, uh, the text here for page 101. Again, this is the same page, Quanoct Farmhold. The journal does a lot here. So uh, in this dream, it's going to read this following text. If we were instructed to have a nightmare also, there's a nightmare text, but we don't want to do that just yet. In your restless dream, a pale lady rises from the water, her eyes milky and her skin spoiled with rot. She whispers something into your ear. Her breath smells of sea salt, kelp, and rotten flesh. You barely remember the words. There was something about three enigmas. One hidden under the Isle of the Dead, one clutched in the grasp of burned hands and arms, and one buried in a mist-covered mound. But what could it mean? There's a hint here. It says the dream refers to three out of nine locations surrounding Quanacht. It's possible some of them are not yet revealed. Interesting. So what we're going to do now is we're also going to tick down. We're going to go down to six on the dial. So we have six more days until everything runs out. And we will now go ahead and reveal our another event. And this is, well, that's not the, that's not the right card. This is the next event. There we go. Uh, good weather. 
So it's our first travel today is free. That's very helpful uh, because we are only have four energy and I really only want to spend two. So this way when I rest, I will actually be able to rest. So let's figure out where we're going to move. I think we want to move up to the Hunter's Grove and look at that place. All right, so I'm going to move up and the Hunter's Grove, I, it says uh, I can pay two energy to gain a food and then draw a green encounter. So I can basically hunt to get food here, um, which is nice. I don't think I really want to do that just yet, but I will also reveal uh, tile 106. So let's pull that out. And that tile is going to be the Four Dweller Mounds. Now, Four Dwellers, those weren't that the same name as those bad dudes I had to watch out for, so this could be a dangerous place. Uh, we see there's actually another place that a men here can be built, just like uh, this other town over here called Whitening. So we're finding some new places that we can potentially build a men here. Uh, but we also have the treasure hunt action that can happen there. Now my first travel was free, so I feel like it's safe to go in to this place as well. Now we're not going to reveal any more because the men here is right here. We're not going to reveal any of these other places because we are already kind of at the far reaches of what is visible and what is safe. But we are down to two energy, and I think we'll go ahead and rest here for the night. We're gonna consume another food off of our board. So this brings us down to two food, uh, and we're going to trigger some more end stuff. But the good news is, let's turn over to our board here. The good news is that I will go back up to full energy, and I will also heal one and remove a terror. Uh, and that's good because I was not hungry or exhausted when I rest. And that's one of the problems with Bior is that like he may be cool and he can craft stuff and that would be really fun and all that great stuff. But the problem is he will then kind of suffer because he has a real hard time trying to stay healthy with that festering wound. Uh, but since I slept here, and we're going to go ahead and remove, move this down to that, and we'll flip over another event. But before I do that, I want to have my dream from 106. So let's pull that out. I'll pull out page 106, and we'll go to the dream space. There are no dreams in this place. The sleep is as cold and silent as the mounds themselves. So that was, that was fortunate that uh, we didn't get any information. But it's a new day. We have a couple of days left, and I still have a little bit of food. So maybe... Just maybe I will go ahead and, and uh, I could go on a treasure hunt. Oh, that sounds a little bit risky. Uh, let's go ahead and explore the Four Dweller Mounds. So we're going to go back to page 106. Now we have full energy this time, so some interesting things could happen. Let's open up the Four Dweller Mounds. And I'm just going to jump straight to the book this time instead of flipping the card. Well, we'll show you what the card looks like on the other side. And... Oh, you could see this were some ancient, uh, some ancient homes along this area. So, here is what it says. Uh, the mist-covered mounds resonate with the sound of spades and pickaxes. Once, only insane treasure hunters worked here. But as more and more gold emerged from under the earth, these burial grounds turned into a regular mine. Or at least... Almost regular. People still disappear or go mad here from time to time. I could uh, wander deep into the mounds, go to verse 1, or maybe chat with the miners, go to verse 2. I think I will chat with the miners. Oh, this is, this one is, this is a long one. You stop and listen to a miner's tale. They say a young foreman's apprentice once met a pale, sad girl between the mounds. And she ran from him without saying a word. Over the next week, he kept slipping away from his work to wander between the mounds, looking for the girl. He saw her two more times, but never managed to catch her. Finally, one day he noticed the girl running into an open four-dweller mound. He went after her. The place was dark and teeming with strange powers. The apprentice kept pushing onward, even as voices taunted him and laughed. Finally... After hours of fruitless search, he emerged from the exit, only discover his body and posture had changed. 
He was now a young, pale girl. Before she was able to overcome the shock of this discovery, a gruff foreman's apprentice spotted her. Shocked and ashamed, she ran away and kept wandering the mounds for days until she found an open tomb again. This time, there was an empty coffin inside. The girl was so tired, she lay in it and fell asleep. She woke up in a comfortable bed as a six-year-old, well, here we go, as a six-year-old boy who still shuddered from the intensity of his dream. This dream never left his mind and finally pushed him to leave his village at the age of 15 and sign up as a foreman's apprentice in the mounds. The man who tells you this story has sunken, sad eyes, full of fear and yearning. You thank him for this time and discreetly move away. Gain one spirituality if your character has heard this story for the first time. Exploration ends. So you get to gain a spirituality. Interesting. So, and I don't have any spirituality, so we're going to gain one and uh, put it right there. All right, that'll help us maybe, or it could hurt us. You never know. You never know how those stats are going to affect you. Um, I wonder if I can... Oh, and I needed to spend an energy. I want to spend another energy. I think I'm going to try and... Uh, I think I'm going to try and explore one more time. So let's go back into the mines again. And into the Four Dweller Mounds. And this time, instead of chatting with the miners, I think I'm going to wander deep into the mounds. So we're going to go to number one. No one was ever able to count the mounds, and the most experienced miners claim new ones keep arriving, though no one can explain how. How far do you dare wander? I can stick to the places where the other miners work, I can, and then I can roll a die. Uh, or I can spend an energy and go just beyond the currently explored part. Roll a die and add plus one for each point of my courage. Or I can spend two energy. Oh, I can spend two energy. I've, I can afford it. I've got two more until I go exhausted again. Um, and I'll add plus two for each point of my courage. All right, I'm going to spend, I'm going to go with the spend two energy. Boom, boom. I'm almost exhausted. I'm almost exhausted now. So we're going to roll a die. And the game comes with this nice little red die here. And let's roll it. Boom, boom, boom. Ooh, a six. Whoa. I got a six. And that was a live roll, too. Like, I didn't rehearse that or nothing, man. That was cool. All right. So I got six uh, plus two for each point of my courage. So I'll, uh, six uh, plus two, that's going to make it eight. Now I'll go to verse eight. Now I'm knocking over stuff. Look at this. All right. So verse eight, and I've got different numbers here. Since I had eight, uh, I got six or higher. So I'm going to go up to here. Uh, you reach the heart of the mounds and stop, awestruck. Now i got to go to verse 3. Oh, gosh, 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 what's going to happen? What's going to happen? 3. A burial mount taller than all the others emerges from the mist in front of you, its front gate betraying the same shine as old steel items. You feel uneasy. This is not a good place for you, for a mortal to be. Should I try and dig into the mound? Should I try to attempt to break? Through the gate requires the old steel smasher. I don't have that. Um, goodness, how am I going to get that? All right, let's try and dig into the mound. We'll go to verse 9. Verse 9. Uh, after a minute of exhausting work, you hear a chilling sound close by. Your labor has attached something you'd rather, attracted something you'd rather avoid. Oh, no. Gain a wealth. Draw cards from the purple encounter deck until you find one with value at least five, resolve that encounter. Oh, goodness, I'm going to gain a wealth, but I don't have to draw a purple encounter card. And then after that, I can attempt, again, it requires the old steel smasher. Okay, so I'm going to gain a wealth. I've got lots of money now. This poor guy fell down. But I have to draw cards from the purple encounter deck. That's going to be rough. All right, so i got the purple encounter deck, and we have to draw an, oh, a wandering priestess. You may heal up to three for a money or a food. That's great. Except I had said draw until you get something with at least five. So that one doesn't count. Next we go. Oh, ouch. Hammerbeak. Hammerbeak looks tough. Value of ten. Well, that does qualify as at least five. Um, he's slow, though, so I'll draw plus one card. So that is pretty cool. 
Um, I don't know, though. Value of 10 is going to be tough. Let's see what happens. Right, so I've drawn four cards. Normally it would be three, but he's slow, so I get plus one. Uh, additionally, since I have the battle horn here, if, uh, if, my, if my sequence ends with a turtle, I'll get plus one as well. So that's nice. I can potentially get a whole lot of cards here, uh, which is good. And I get plus uh, two to my total sequence because he does have uh, aggression and or courage. So that's awesome. Now, I did draw a Bloodthirsty Rage, which is a really good damage card, but he doesn't have the double, so I don't, well, I'll don't. i need to set that up, uh, and I don't have anything that can set it up right now. So um, we can put down, let's see, let's, let's play, we'll play Outsmart. I don't have uh, a time signal on uh, symbol here, so I won't get that bonus, but it'll just be one. We'll start that one out, and what else can we put down? Um, Maybe, maybe faint. All right, we'll put that one down. Um, let's see, that one's this one's not going to help me as much. So I'll I'll end there. I can keep one. So I'll keep bloodthirsty rage. I'll discard this one and I'll draw um, a couple more. Uh, but now it's his turn, and he is going to attack me for three damage, which is rough. So we're gonna. Go over to the board here, and we're going to move our... Oh, we're going to take three hits. One, two, three. Not too nice. Not too nice at all. All right. Let's start the next A couple part. of new cards. Uh, I have ooh, Final Blow. This one's actually going to connect here. Um, this one I can't use because I don't have two points in practicality. And I could connect it with magic, but I don't have any magic points to spend. Um, so what I think I'll do here is I will do Bloodthirsty Rage and line that up with a turtle. And then um, bring that into Final Blow. Oh, wait, no. Right, wrong way. Final blow and line that up to bloodthirsty rage. This way, I get the two to the two. There we go. That's that's how we're gonna do that. Okay. Um, so now I can add everything up. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight because of my sword. Um, still not enough to beat his value of ten. Uh, now I've got four cards though, so he's going to do three damage to me and counter the last. Oh, that was nasty. Um, so he'll counter this one. Uh, that goes away, and I've received two more wounds. So actually, I take five more wounds. Oh, I should have thought that through a little bit more because I only have four health. So that brings me down. I can't go below zero. So that brings me down there. Now, all of a sudden, my terror is higher than my health. So I'm, I'm dying, and I'm going insane. So I have to attach some cards. I have to attach the You Are Dying card to my board. And then the are going insane card to my board. And that's pretty much the end for me. Um, it's, uh, yeah, maybe I should have thought this through a little bit more. Maybe I really should have had those, uh, well, those tools it wanted. What was it called? They called the, uh, the old steel smasher item. I would have been able to uh, take a different route and not have to fight that guy. So now all of a sudden I'm looking at this board and saying, you know, maybe I need to get something else before I go up in there. Maybe I do. So maybe next time, maybe I'll start the game again, go down a different way. Maybe there was something down here I didn't explore yet. If had I gone here or here, I could have unveiled this location. So a lot of different things that I could have done. I could have gone up to this town uh, and gone into the town, maybe tried a diplomacy check to see what was in there. Could have gone hunting. Uh, There's a lot of places I didn't yet explore. Uh, and again, with the save sheet and all the different statuses you can get, going to one place first uh, is going to be different than going to another place first and maybe new options unlock. So pretty interesting. Uh, but yes, be sure to check this out on Kickstarter. This is Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon by Awaken Realms. Pretty cool game. Again, this might have been a little bit easier. Had I was Maybe I was playing multiplayer next turn. I had Mr. Maggot with me when he came up in there. And helped me fight Mr. Hammer, Hammer Break. Because I got basically eaten by a giant bird.
So, uh, yeah, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I want to also thank all my patrons on Patreon. You guys help make this possible. I want to thank you so much, and have a great day.